Right, so this second video about the annot annotated bibliography is focused on um, giving you some assistance in writing the evaluation um, of your resources that you've chosen. So let's have a look. So there's five points that you must address in your evaluation of each resource that's included in your annotated bibliography. And here they are. So you must address their relevance, um, their coverage of the topic, their authority on the topic, their objectivity in relation to the topic and their currency. And you should be aiming to write, you know, between one and three sentences perhaps addressing each point. So for some points you'll write more and for other points you might write less, okay? But the most important thing is that you meet the word count for the annotated bib. So for relevance, these are the questions that you should be thinking about and being answering, be answering in the evaluation of each of your resources. So firstly, once you've read through the resource, how relevant is it to your essay topic um, and the problems you've chosen? It might be relevant to one of your problems that you've chosen. It might be relevant to both of the problems that you've chosen. Um, and you might also uh, tell your marker whether it's more relevant in terms of providing information on the problem or the solutions or perhaps it has information on both. So to put it really clearly for you, the key word we expect to actually see here in your annotated bibliography is relevant or relevance. Don't just tell us why, that it's relevant though, you need to tell us why it's relevant. Okay, then you will move to coverage and so you'll examine each of your resources again and you'll answer, be able to answer some or all of the questions in your eval evaluation. So firstly, who is it written for? So is the resource aimed at children? Is it a popular, um, more popular piece of um, research that might you might find in a newspaper or a magazine? Or is it written for a scholarly reader? Now, why is that important? It will um, dictate to some extent the degree in which the resource covers the topic. That leads us on to the second point there. How in-depth is it the material? Does it really cover everything or does it cover a specific part of your topic or your problems that you're looking at? Do you think that it offers anything new in what it covers um, regarding the topic? And do you think that the information is accurate or you know, is it riddled with errors? So if it's an academic journal article or book, you would expect it to be accurate and that it's been checked and peer reviewed. If it's something that's appeared perhaps in the local paper, you might take some of it with a grain of salt or if it's from a website that doesn't look very um, professional, you might wonder as to its accuracy. Thirdly, you're going to look at the authority of each of your resources and there's some questions here that you should answer in your evaluation. Firstly, is there an author who is visible on the resource? Um, because sometimes, particularly in the case of newspaper or magazine articles, there's no author visible. Um, but if there is an author, that's a good thing, then you need to maybe do a little bit of um, searching around about that author. What are their qualifications? Are they a reputable person in the field um, or on the topic that you're looking at? And there might be some information about this on the resource or you could do a quick little Google search of their name and see what comes up. If the article, um, if you're looking at a journal article, has been peer reviewed before it's been published, so um, experts in the field have looked at it and said yes this is worthy of publication in our journal then it's got a high degree of authority. Also you might look at the publisher if it's a book or a magazine and see if they're a reputable publisher. Do they usually publish that kind of material or um, have you never heard of them before or are they known for their scholarly work? So again this might involve a little bit of investigation on your part um, as to the publisher. And if you're looking at a web page, you need to have a good look around and see if it's sponsored by any particular bodies and who that who those sponsors might be. And does that put the authority of the source into question in any way or does it look like it's still quite objective and reliable? 
So objectivity, um, is there any bias? So does it only give, that means does the resource only give us one side of the argument or um, give us one viewpoint on the topic or is it more evenly balanced? Um, are they trying to really sway the reader's opinion to agree with them um, or is the modality lower than that? Um, and also something you might, might like to consider with web resources, if it's littered with advertising then perhaps there's a possibility that those advertisers have had some influence as to what's been published on the web page so the objectivity might be compromised in some way. So they're all things you think about in terms of objectivity. And finally currency, look at each of your resources and firstly when was it published? What's the date of publication? Is there a newer or older edition? Um, if the material has been written or um, rewritten or revised um, then that may be different to the initial publication date and if the material's older do you think that there's more recent information out there or will this resource be alright for what you want to use it for? Um, if the source is a web page you should be able to see when it was last updated so if the web page was last updated in 2010 that means that no one's looked at it for three years so things may have changed um, and no one's bothered to to fix that up um, so that means that it's not as current as it could be and also if the source is a web page has it been maintained so if some of the links are broken um, then that means also that the source has been neglected and um, its currency would come into question. So those are all the things that you can think about as you're evaluating each one of your resources in the annotated bibliography. Different questions will be more appropriate for different types of resources uh, but if you consider all of those things you will find that you have plenty to write as you evaluate each of the resources that you're using for your annotated bibliography.